Hi everyone, I'm Angela with Burnley and Trowbridge. Today we're going to do a fun project that can be a handy item for your sewing basket or 18th century pocket. You will need either a needle book kit or two pieces of linen, silk, or lightweight wool, two pieces of medium or light coating broadcloth wool, needles and thread appropriate for your fabric, and two pieces of pasteboard approximately two to three inches by three to four inches. But first, a little history. We know that needle books were a common accessory of the 18th century woman. They were advertised in stationery stores and toy shops, small items for those of you who are thinking of dolls and teddy bears, and are made of a wide variety of materials, often of quality such as silk or gilded metal. From advertisements, we see that they were an important part of any woman's sewing basket, and in the 18th century, may have been carried on their person with extra pockets for items, such as the memorandum found in a drowned woman's needle book, which indicated she was the wife of a publican, or the woman who carried her marriage certificate in her needle book. Needle books were often given as gifts to young ladies or sweethearts, as depicted in primary fiction. I've linked a few surviving needle books on our Pinterest board. They are made of ornate metal, beaded, wood, and embroidered, and range in age. Needle books could be bought or homemade in which they could be made as simple or as elaborate as the maker wished. In the late 1800s, needle manufacturers saw an opportunity to use needle books to advertise their wares and covered pasteboard cards with lovely Victorian graphics. These pasteboard books grew to be elaborate in shape and graphics. Books shaped like fans, animals, and teapots, elaborately decorated to commemorate an event or given away as advertising or promotions. Retail stores have books made with their logos shown prominently to be used as an advertisement to woo the savvy woman who did most of the shopping and the sewing. In my own lifetime, you still see bought needles in decorative needle books. Today, our needles still come in a cardboard book, although it is a more utilitarian than anything else. For the linen needle book you see here, I used number 10 crewels and 100 over three linen thread. For the silk book, which we are preparing to do, I will be using our silk sewing thread. You're going to want to cut two pieces of stiff board. We've used heavy watercolor board to the desired size. Ours measures three by four. Cut two pieces of linen, lightweight wool, or silk to cover measuring double the width by the height plus a quarter inch seam allowance all the way around. Yeah, I know, you have to math unless you bought the kit. If you want to embroider the front of your needle book, you will need to do it at this point. We have a link below for a download of original embroidery patterns from the ladies' magazine dated to the late 18th century. If you're embroidering, you will want to trace your pattern onto the left side facing of your fabric pieces. This is because the long fold will be to the outside of the needle book. Next step will be to press your seam allowance all the way around. I find the easiest is to fold the fabric in half, slide in the pasteboard, then mark the allowance before pressing to make sure you have a nice fit.
Once it is all pressed off, you are going to again fold your fabric in half and insert your pasteboard. Remember, if you have embroidered it, the folded side goes to the outside and this is the top of your needle book. Fold in the top and bottom seam allowances as well as one side allowance. Clip or pin in place. I find the clips easier because they don't put a hole in the pasteboard. Do this for both sides. You're going to enclose the pasteboard with the small whip stitch on the tops and bottoms of the front and the back. Next, prepare your tape by matching it to the long side of the needle book and turning under any excess as a narrow hem. This will be the spine of your little book. Next, you will be attaching the linen tape to the long seam allowance, which has not been folded in, placing it right side to right side and stitching along the seam allowance with a small running stitch. Press this in and fell the folded edge of the long side to just above the stitch line. Repeat these steps for the back of the book, attaching in the same manner. So now you have a little book which is encased in fabric and has a small tape spine. Cut two pieces of medium weight, like bays, which was common, or lightweight broadcloth to approximately a quarter of an inch smaller than the width of the front and back. Lay these two pieces down inside the book, centering them and stitch down to the spine using a small straight stitch.
add embellishments or if you want an additional pocket on the inside to make it your own. Most of all, have fun. Until next time, friends, keep sewing.